All right, you guys, I'm back with some more George Carlin. This one is The Illusion of Security. Okay, uh, this one was requested. I couldn't find the original comment of who requested it, but somebody requested that I watch that, so that's what I'm going to do. It's only six minutes long. If you like watching stand-up comedy, if you love laughing, please consider subscribing to my channel. I love watching stand-up comedy with you guys. And if you would like to support my channel even more, I have super thanks right here on this video. I also have Venmo and Amazon wishlist. But let's get right into it. George Carlin, The Illusion of Security. Let's go. And that's another thing they don't like at the airport, jokes. You know? Yeah, you can't joke about a bomb. Well, why is it just jokes? What about a riddle? <laughs> How about a limerick? How about a bomb anecdote? You know, no punchline, just a really cute story. Or suppose you intended the remark, not as a joke, but as an ironic musing. Are they prepared to make that distinction? Why, I think not. And besides, who's to say what's funny? Airport security is a stupid idea, it's a waste of money, and it's only there for one reason, to make white people feel safe. That's all. The I wonder if this was before 9-11. of safety, because the authorities know they can't make an airplane completely safe. Too many people have access. You'll notice the drug smugglers don't seem to have a lot of trouble getting their little packages on board, do they? No, and God bless them too. <laughs> And by the way, an airplane flight shouldn't be completely safe. You need a little danger in your life. Take a fucking chance once in a while, will you? What are you going to do? Play with your prick for another 30 years? What are you going to read People magazine and eat at Wendy's till the end of time? Take a fucking chance. Besides, even if they made all of the airplanes completely safe, the terrorists would simply start bombing other places that are crowded. Porn shops, crack houses, titty bars, and gangbangs. <laughs> Jeez. You know, entertainment venues. The odds of you being killed by a terrorist are practically zero. This so had to have been before 9-11. It had to. You have to be a realist. You have to be realistic about terrorism. Certain groups of people, certain groups, Muslim fundamentalists, Christian fundamentalists, Jewish fundamentalists, and just plain guys from Montana. <laughs> Jeez. I'm going to continue to make life in this country very interesting for a long, long time. That's the reality. Angry men in combat fatigues talking to God on a two-way radio and muttering incoherent slogans about freedom are eventually going to provide us with a great deal of entertainment. Especially after your stupid fucking economy collapses all around you and the terrorists come out of the woodwork and you'll have anthrax in your water supply and sarin gas in your air conditioners there'll be chemical and biological suitcase bombs in every city and i say enjoy it relax enjoy the show take a fucking chance put a little fun in your life to me terrorism is exciting it's exciting oh my, geez. i think the very idea that you can set off a bomb in a marketplace and kill several hundred people is exciting and stimulating and i see it as a form of entertainment <laughs> What is going on here? Yeah. But, but I also know that most Americans are soft and frightened and unimaginative and they don't realize there's such a thing as dangerous fun. And they certainly don't recognize a good show when they see one. I have always been willing to put myself at great personal risk for the sake of entertainment. And I've always been willing to put you at great personal risk for the same reason. As far as I'm concerned, all of this airport security, all the searches, the screenings, the cameras, the questions, it's just one more way of reducing your liberty and reminding you that they can fuck with you anytime they want. Ain't as that the truth? It, as long as you put up Whoa. With it. Which means, of course, anytime they want. Because that's what Americans do now. They're wow. always willing to trade away a little of their freedom in exchange for the feeling, the illusion of security. What we have now is a completely wow. neurotic population obsessed with security and safety and crime and drugs and cleanliness and hygiene and germs. There's another thing, germs. Where did this sudden fear of germs come from? 
in this country. Have you noticed this? The media constantly running stories about all the latest infections, salmonella, E. coli, hantavirus, bird flu. Wow, you and, guys. And Americans, are, they panic easily. So now everybody's running around scrubbing this and spraying that and overcooking their food and repeatedly washing their hands, trying to avoid all contact with germs. It's ridiculous, and it goes to ridiculous lengths in prisons. Before they give you a lethal injection, they swab your arm with alcohol. Do they really do that? That's it's insane. That's so silly. Whoa. Yeah. Really? Well, they don't want you to get an infection. And you can see their point. Wouldn't want some guy to go to hell and be sick. It would take a lot of the sportsmanship out of the whole execution. Fear of germs, why these fucking pussies? <laughs> you can't even get a decent hamburger anymore. They cook the shit out of everything now because everybody's afraid of food poisoning. Hey, where's your sense of adventure? Take a fucking chance, will you? You know how many people die in this country from food poisoning every year? 9,000, that's all. It's a minor risk. <laughs> Take a fucking chance, bunch of goddamn pussies. Besides, what do you think you have an immune system for? It's for killing germs. But it yeah. needs practice. It needs germs to practice on. So, so listen. So listen. If you kill all the germs around you and live a completely sterile life, then when germs do come along, you're not going to be prepared. And never mind ordinary germs. What are you going to do when some super virus comes along that turns your vital organs a into liquid virus. shit? I'll tell you what you're going to do. You're going to get sick, you're going to die, and you're going to deserve it because you're fucking weak and you got a fucking weak immune system. Now, uh, okay, wow. Okay, I want to know when this was filmed. Um, and I also, I mean, I heard everything he said. I want to know what he thinks about this now, because I feel like a lot of people, when they get, you know, big, where they have a following or, you know, they make it in Hollywood or whatever you want to call it, whatever you want to call it, they change their mind on things. So... I wonder if he still feels this way about trading freedom for the idea of safety, right? The pretend safety and then also this whole idea of like, don't be afraid of germs, let your immune system take care of it. I wonder. I wonder if he's still, I mean, maybe he's not around. I have literally no idea. I should just look it up, but um I'm sure you guys will let me know in the comments. So yeah, I wonder. I mean, I think if you guys have been watching my channel for a while, you guys probably know where I stand with all this. <laughs> I'm not into trading freedom for, you know, pretend safety. I don't think that's right. I don't think that's right. And I do believe in our immune systems. So yeah, wow. But I was surprised by the whole thing because this wasn't really funny to me. I might have let out like one or two giggles or something, but like I don't feel like this had me laughing. This more just was like, wow. <laughs> this had me more just like, whoa, listen to what he's saying. Does he still think that? Or, you know, is he maybe a sellout? I have no idea. I don't know. I don't This is literally, I think, my second time watching him. So, yeah, I was surprised by that. And also, I wonder when this was filmed. But, yeah, thanks for watching this with me, you guys. Thanks for hanging out. If you like this video, please consider subscribing. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.